In this session, we're going to look at how we can create a custom match line block complete with automated sheet number labels. On my screen is an example of what I'm looking for. I've got a planning profile sheet here. I created this using Civil 3D. If I zoom in over on the right side, we can see the match line that was added when I used the automated sheet creation tools. This match line is perfect. However, there may come a time where I'd like to add a manual match line. So I'd like to create a block that looks and acts as much like this match line as possible. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I've already created such a block. Let me insert one and I'll show you how it works. I'll do that by going to the Insert tab. I'll click Insert and then I'll choose More Options. And then in the Block Name menu, I'll choose this block called ML Next, stands for Match Line Next. The label associated with this block will reference the next sheet in the sheet set. When I insert the block, I will specify the insertion point and rotation. Let me click OK. And we'll assume we're going to add the match line to station 12. So I'm going to place this to the midpoint of the tick, and I'll rotate it to the end point of the tick. I can then go through and populate my station value. I do not have to touch the sheet number, though. That is taken care of for me automatically. Let me click OK. We can see it looks virtually identical to the original. If I select the block, there are a series of additional grips. Let's take a look at some of these. I'm going to click this arrow, and I'll extend this end out to a point nearest to this edge. We'll pull this end out to a point nearest to this edge. And now if I wanted to, I could trim my viewport back simply by clicking it, and I'll grab these grips and pull them back to meet the new match line. Now that we've seen an example of this custom match line block, let me show you how I made it. This is a perfect opportunity for us to talk about dynamic blocks. I'm going to jump over to another drawing. In this file, I started out on a layout tab, and I drew some of the beginnings of my match line. I've got two line segments here, and I've got some initial text labels. So this is where I'm starting. Let me select this geometry, and I'm going to right-click. From the clipboard menu, I'll choose Copy with Base Point. And I'd like to copy this from the end point of this line, which will be the insertion point of the block. Now that I've copied that geometry in my clipboard, let's paste it into the block editor. I'll access the block editor by typing B Edit, and I'll press Enter. I will then give my block a name. I'm going to call this underscore match line next, and I'll click OK. Once I get into the block editor, I will right-click, and from the clipboard menu, I'll choose Paste, and I'll paste my geometry to the 0, 0 coordinate, which will be the insertion point of the block. Now that I have the beginnings here, I'd like to create some attributes, one to hold the station value, and then one to hold the sheet number. We'll create the station value attribute first. In the block editor, in the action parameters panel, I'll click attribute definition. I'd like to give this attribute a tag name. We'll just call it STA. The prompt represents the question, what is the station? And then for the default value, I'm going to type something that is representative of how that value should be entered in the drawing. I will then click OK and I'll place this attribute in the file. When I place this, it doesn't have the same attributes as the original text. Not a problem, I'll go to the Home tab, and here in the clipboard panel, we'll choose Match Properties. I'll click the original label, and then I'll click my attribute. When I'm finished, I'll press Enter. I'd like to do one more thing. This original text has a top left justification. Let's select the new attribute, and I'll go to the Properties palette, and I'll drag down to the Justify field, and we'll change this to top left. Now we'll move it into position. I'll do that by launching the Move command. I'll select my attribute press enter. I'd like to pick this up from the insertion point of the text, and I'd like to place this to shift right click from, I'd like to place it from the insertion point of this object. Let me press F8 to lock my ortho, and I'll pull this over and we'll place it right there. Let's create one more attribute for the sheet number. We'll go back to the block editor tab. I apologize for my screen size. I can get to that tab by opening the side menu. We'll choose attribute definition again, and then for the sheet number, I'm going to use an attribute tag of n and then the pound sign. It'll represent next number. Prompt, we'll just type next number, and then for the default value, I'm going to come over and click the insert field button. I want to automate this value. In the field category, I'll choose sheet set. Now, I would really like to choose next sheet number. Unfortunately, we don't have a field for that. That's okay, because there's another way we can get to it. I'm going to choose current sheet number, and then I'll come down to the field expression area, and I'll select this text, right-click and copy it to the clipboard. Then we'll open the field category, and I'll choose objects. I will then choose formula, and in the formula box, I will right-click and paste the current sheet number, and then I'll type plus one. Consequently, if I wanted the previous sheet, I would use minus one. Whenever I place this block in the drawing, it will collect the current sheet number and then add one to it. When I'm finished, I'll click Evaluate, and then I'll click OK. This attribute's ready to go. I'll click OK. Let me place this in the drawing. We'll go back to the Home tab, and we will match properties. Let's select it again, and we'll change the justification to top left. And then we'll move this into position. 
I'll move it from the insertion points to a point from the insertion point of another object, and we'll drag this straight over with the ortho. Now that I have that in position, let's test the block. In the Block Editor Tools, we have a button right down here that allows us to test our block. This will open the block in a special testing area. Let me zoom in. This looks pretty good. As I look at this, I may question, you know, what if my sheet set is quite large? What if it exceeds 100 sheets? As this number gets longer, it may encroach on my station label. What I'd like to do is create a dynamic property to allow me to drag this label back and forth if necessary. Let's do that. I'll do that by closing the test block. And then over on the block authoring palettes, I'm going to go to the parameters tab and I'm going to add a linear parameter. Think of parameters as grips. I'm going to add grips to this block. A linear grip will move left, right, or up, down. For my start point, I'm going to choose the insertion point of the sheet label, and then my end point will be the insertion point of the station text, and I'll pull this down. So I'm creating a grip that's going to allow me to change the distance between this text and my sheet number label. Once I've added a parameter, I'll go to the Actions tab, and I can apply an action to that grip. I'm going to apply a Move action. Once I select the action, all I have to do is follow the prompts at the command line. Select parameter this one. Which parameter point am I associating with this action? You can see I've got two grips there. I'll click closest to this grip on the right. I will then select the objects that need to move and I'll press enter. One more thing, you can see that my parameter has an exclamation point associated with it. That simply means that this grip on the left has no action assigned. To fix this, I'll select the parameter and we'll go to the properties palette. Down here at the bottom, number of grips, you can see that's set to two. Let me change that to one. That will eliminate the unnecessary grip. Let's do one more quick test. I'll choose test block. Now if I click the block, we can see that extra grip, and if I click it, I can now move this text in a linear fashion by dragging that grip. I'm going to press Escape, and then we'll close the test block. Next, I'd like to give myself an independent length control over these two outer endpoints. I'll do that with some more linear parameters. So on the Parameters tab, let me click Linear, and my start point will be the inner end point of this right side, and we'll take it to the outer end point, and I'll pull this up. I'll choose Linear again. And we'll do the same thing going the other way. We'll pull this up. Let's go to the Actions tab. Now, I don't want to use Move this time. I don't want to actually pull these lines out and separate them. Instead, I'm going to use a Stretch action. I just want to stretch the end point. So I'll choose Stretch. I will then select my parameter. Which parameter point do I want to associate? It'll be this outer one. I will then make my selection, just like if I was using the Stretch command. And then I will make another selection to identify the objects that need to stretch. When I'm finished, I'll press Enter. We'll do the same thing for the other side. Stretch this parameter this grip, this area, and these objects. Finally, we'll take care of the exclamation points. I'm going to try and do this two at a time. We'll select both parameters, go to the Properties palette, pull to the bottom, number of grips, we'll set this to one. When I'm finished, I'm not going to bother testing this time. I'm going to assume everything went to plan. I'll choose Close Block Editor, and we'll save changes to the block. Let's delete this geometry, and then we'll insert one of our new symbols. I'll choose Insert. I'll click the Insert button. I'll choose more options. Since I use the underscore, that's right here at the top. I'll place the block on screen with a rotation angle. Let me place this. I'll press F8 to turn off my ortho, and let me click for my rotation. We'll enter a station, maybe 12 plus 0, 0 as an example. And I can pull out my endpoints. I can drag my station label. Got to be mindful of my running object snaps. Perfect. So in any drawing where I place this block, it is going to give me the appropriate next sheet number. Now I'm all about testing. Let's try one more thing. I'm going to open up a plan and profile sheet. This happens to be sheet three in this sheet set. I will jump back to my original drawing and let's take this block that we made. I'll right click and then we'll copy this to the clipboard. We'll jump over to this plan and profile sheet. Let's right click and from the clipboard I will paste this and if I've been living right as soon as I place this in the drawing you can see that sheet number is changed to four which is the next sheet in the set. As you can see with a little creative block work we can take some of the manualness out of manually placed match lines.